Hello, I'm Derek Walker. I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and we're studying together the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. And today we come to Moses. And each hero of faith uh, embodies a special characteristic of the life of faith that we need to learn from. And the special characteristic of Moses' faith was that it was an overcoming faith. He overcame immense opposition and obstacles by faith. The, the whole might of Egypt, the superpower of its time, Pharaoh, an evil and powerful ruler, was all arranged against Moses. And yet somehow, Moses overcame by faith. Egypt offered everything to Moses. Egypt threatened everything to Moses, but yet Moses was able to overcome. Because he heard from God, and he had faith in his heart, and he moved forward and he acted on that word, and as a result, he was victorious over all. And he embodies overcoming faith, and he's a picture of Christ in this, who is called the prophet like unto Moses. Christ overcame sin, Satan, everything, all the whole powers of this world that were arranged against him. He did that to accomplish our salvation. And so in our life of faith too, we have an overcoming faith. We face opposition from Satan, from the world system uh, over which Satan rules. But Jesus says to us in John 16, 33, these things, these words I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. You see, in the world you have tribulation, but of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And if we believe in him and the things he says to us, we too overcome the world. And we have peace in our heart. We overcome fear. Well, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In all these things, all these trials, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You see, believers are world overcomers. Part of the life of faith involves doing the impossible, overcoming impossible odds. Hallelujah. Standing in the face of impossibility and overcoming. One shall put a thousand to flight and two shall put ten thousand to flight because one with God is always a majority. If we've heard a word from God, we stand firm on that and we move forward and we overcome anything that the world tempts or threatens us with. Psalm 18 says, For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. Pray, that's the spirit of faith, overcoming faith. And we're going to look now at five phases of Moses' life, each of which demonstrate an aspect of overcoming faith. First of all, faith, the faith that overcomes the fear of man. That's in Exodus chapter 1 and 2. And it says in Hebrews 11:23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Now, Exodus 1 describes how Pharaoh pressed the Israelites into slavery because as they kept multiplying faster than the Egyptians, uh, they were felt threatened and they actually told the midwives to kill all the Israelite children, but by faith, those midwives overcame the fear of man, and they refused to do that, and Israel kept multiplying more and more. And then eventually, in verse 22, Pharaoh made this command that every son born must be cast into the river, you see. And now it comes to Moses' birth in Exodus 2. And the woman conceived and bore a son, that's Moses, and she saw that he was a beautiful child, and she hid him three months. Now, this was under penalty of death now. This had become very serious. It's Hebrew says that they hid him by faith because they saw he was a beautiful child. Now, how can we understand this? What caused them to risk their life if they were caught by in that time when they should have thrown him in the river? because he was a beautiful child, that sounds like the sight of the eyes. 
But Acts 7 clarifies it in verse 17. When the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose who didn't know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies that they might not live. At this time Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God. And he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. Now, no doubt, no, Moses was a fine physical specimen, but they were motivated by faith, not by the sight of the eyes. Through the eyes of faith, his parents discerned that he was a goodly child. That is, that there was a special favor of God on him. There was a call of God on his life. He was well-pleasing to God. And in other words, they had heard from God about him, that this was a specially called man, and that, and that therefore he must live and fulfill God's plan. And that motivated them to guard him, to risk their lives for him, and disobey Pharaoh. And it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw by faith, you see, that he was a chosen child of God. And by faith, they were not afraid of the king's command. Their faith caused him to overcome the fear, the natural fear of coming against Pharaoh's command, which would mean their death. But by faith, they knew that God would be with them. So faith, you see, one aspect of faith here is that faith discerns what is holy and anointed by God, and it guards it. We must guard what's been entrusted by God to us, whether it's our anointing, his word, his call on our life. We guard that. They guarded Moses by faith. And here we see it was their faith that overcame the fear of the mighty Pharaoh. You see, unbelief is a lack of faith in God, but fear is the reverse of faith. It's faith in the enemy. It, now, the enemy was powerful. And it threatened to kill them. But by faith, they were not afraid. They overcame because they knew God was with him. And he, God was greater. So faith, you see, overcomes fear. By looking to trusting God, they didn't come under the fat power of fear and intimidation. By faith, they saw God who was greater. By faith, they feared God, so they didn't fear what man could do. And Hebrews 13 says, he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, this is the spirit of faith, the Lord is my helper, I shall not fear. What can man do to me? Their faith overcame the fear of man. They heard from God about Moses, and so they knew God was with them to protect Moses' life. Hallelujah. And it's just like Jesus who was tried to be killed at his, all the male babies being killed at his birth. But yet, God worked through the faith of his parents to protect him in Egypt. Well, secondly, we see in Moses' life that faith overcomes the world's temptations and tribulations. And this is in Hebrews verse 11, 30, 24 to 26. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Now, to understand this, you've got to understand that Moses grew up with a dual inheritance of Egypt and Israel. He was in the world, he was in Egypt, but his heart was not of the world because he identified with his people Israel. He ultimately had to make a choice between the two. Did he belong to Israel? Did he belong to Egypt? You can't ultimately serve two masters. You have to make a decision. To the sight of the eyes, it was obvious what was best. He had all the riches of Egypt. He had power. He had position, a comfortable life, everything he wanted. On the other hand was poverty and slavery in Israel, with Israel. Passing pleasure and treasures or uh, affliction, on the other hand. Why on earth would he choose to identify with Israel? Why? Because he saw by faith that they were the people of God. They were the ones that had the glorious future and the plan of God. They had the promises of God. And all the treasures of Egypt were fleeting. And so the world tempts us, you see. 
with what it has to offer. It asks us to sell our soul for it. To, if we just would bow down and worship it, like with Jesus. But Jesus overcame by faith in God's word. He said it is written. And the world doesn't just tempt us, it threatens us with affliction. If we stand on God's word, if we identify with God's people. And by faith, though, Moses overcame both the temptation, the pleasures of sin, of, den of, de of, of denying his place in God's plan, and also he overcame the intimidation. Faith, how does faith do that? It esteems the earthly things lightly, and it values the spiritual things, the promises of God highly, knowing that these things will last forever. Moses revealed his choice when he was aged 40. And this is really when the, this, this passage applies to. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, It came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, and he went out to his brethren. Notice he sees them as his brethren. And he looked at their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And so he looked this way and that way. And what, it, what was happening here is he was looking to see if anyone else would come to the rescue because this was a critical moment now because if he acted to save this Israelite, he would have revealed himself and that would have brought all kinds of trouble on his life because up to that point, he just seemed like an Egyptian. And when he saw that there was no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And I, I believe that this was essentially a self-defense thing. He intervened to save this man's life and he ended up killing this Egyptian. And uh, he went out the second day, and again he saw two Hebrew men fighting, and he intervened to try and um, settle that dispute because he, he knew he was called to lead the people. And then they reject him. They say, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? And says, Are you, are you going to kill uh, me as well? And suddenly Moses realized that the, the news was out that he had killed this Egyptian, that he had defended an Israelite, that he had revealed his true calling. And when Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the man land of Midian. Well, it says in Acts, it gives some more uh, insight on this. It, it says that when he came to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, it says he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would have delivered them by his hand, but they did not understand. So already Moses knew that he was called of God, and he was actually operating in that call, but Israel rejected him. This is all a picture of Jesus when he came the first time. He was rejected by Israel, but then when he, and then he had to go away for 40 years, Jesus had to go away for 40 jubilees. When he returns, as Moses returns, he will deliver his people, Israel, from the Pharaoh, from the Antichrist. Well, anyway, at this critical moment, Moses was forced to choose between sin, the, the pleasures of sin. The sin would have been just to do nothing, just to be an Egyptian and, and keep his pleasures. And he could have, but he chose rather to identify with his people with the promises of God, with the destiny of his people, and take on the affliction that that meant. He revealed his faith. He saw past the temporal pleasures of sin, of staying quiet, and he saw the everlasting eternal reward of identifying with the plan of God for his life. And that's why it says, by faith Moses, when he came of age, refused to be called or identified with as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. You see, the key to overcoming both the temptation to identify with Egypt and the threat of the affliction of identifying with Israel was that he looked to the eternal reward. He looked past the initial situation. He looked to the promise of God, the eternal reward. That's what balanced the equation for him. And there's much in the Bible about our rewards. That's what's going to help you overcome that temptation and the threat that's coming against you for standing strong in your faith. 
and overcoming the pressure of the world. Just keep your eyes on the prize. Well, the third thing in Moses' life was 40 years later. And this shows Moses now in faith again now, coming back and overcoming all the power of the enemy. And this is the events now leading up to the Exodus. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt. That's in the Exodus. By faith he forsook Egypt. This isn't talking about when he fled from the face of Pharaoh earlier. He didn't do that by faith. He was in fear. This is now by faith he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king, you see. This is when he confronted the wrath of Pharaoh at the time of the Exodus and the ten plagues. And by faith he stood against Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Imagine coming against Pharaoh the way Moses did and not being afraid of Pharaoh. You might think Pharaoh could destroy him, but he couldn't because the power of God was on Moses so much. He was in faith. He knew that God was with him. And this uh, was not his earlier escape. This was the events leading up to the Exodus. Mighty Pharaoh was the, over the superpower of this time. But by faith... Moses confronted Pharaoh and overcame the power of Egypt. And he actually brought down the 12th dynasty of Egypt, crashing on its knees. Egypt then went into a dark age after that, was invaded by the Hiskos. Moses had faith to confront and to move that kingdom, that mountain that was standing in the way of God's people. He de declaring, let my people go, get out of the way. And he was given a rod of God, the rod of God's authority, by which he came against that mountain and removed it. And we have the name of Jesus, the authority of God, by which we have an overcoming faith to overcome whatever the power of the enemy. By faith, he overcame all the gods of Egypt, all the power of Egypt. Where did this faith come from? Exodus 3, he heard from God. He heard the word of God at the burning bush. You know, you need to go to Burning Bush University. God revealed himself to him there and called him to return to Egypt, confront Pharaoh, Pharaoh and deliver Egypt. To, sorry, deliver Israel out of Egypt. And because uh, they'd been praying to God to, to, to deliver them. And Moses confronted Pharaoh with those 10 plagues. And as he did that, Pharaoh just got more and more angry. And actually, he made things worse for the Israelites. And even the Israelites started complaining more against Moses. Immense pressure was coming against Moses just to quit, just to give up. But it says, by faith, he did not fear the wrath of the king because he'd heard the word from God. He endured, it says, for he endured. He continued to confront Pharaoh. He continued to come against this opposition. What helped him? as seeing him who is invisible. He saw that God was with him. God had given him the faith, and by faith he was overcoming the power of Pharaoh. And the more Pharaoh turned up the heat, the more he endured, and in the end overcame. Praise God. He saw him who is invisible. He saw that the greater one was with him. That's what gave him the power to stand. Pharaoh wanted to destroy him, but he stood firm. He was not afraid because he knew God was with him. He did not fear the wrath of Pharaoh. Praise God. And that, that is the next stage of Moses' life. Now we come to the fourth stage. Faith overcomes God's judgment on sin. The greatest danger against us is the judgment of God that is due to fall upon our sin. And in verse 28, we see the secret of this faith that overcomes this. It says, by faith, Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And judgment was coming, you see. In Exodus 12, God gave Moses the instructions for keeping the Passover. Everyone was to kill the Passover lamb. In the afternoon, they were to take the blood and apply it to the doorposts and the lintel. And then they were to eat the lamb and then leave Egypt in haste. And God says, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So God moves in judgment now against all sin. Now the blood, he says, will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So here's God's judgment coming down. And we are all, we've all sinned. We are all under the judgment of God. And he says, I will pass through and judge. But he says, I'll do something else. If you have accepted the Passover lamb, and if you've applied the blood, and if you are under the blood, he says, I won't pass through you, I will pass over you. And I want to explain that in a minute. He instructed Israel to keep the Passover. And he said, the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. So the Lord will stop the destroyer coming through. And then in verse 26, it's the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel when he struck the Egyptians down. Now you see, this is a picture of divine judgment. The destroyer comes on all sin. To pass over, he passes over those who are under the blood. This word Passover is used in one other place. It's the word to hover over. It's a picture of God, as it were, as a bird spreads his wings and protects. He says, I want to cover you, Jerusalem. He spreads his wings of mercy over us, protecting us from judgment. The verse where it's used is Isaiah 31, verse 5. It says, like birds flying around, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will also defend it. Passing over, he will preserve it. And this is the word, hovering over, he will preserve it. You see, this is a picture of faith in the blood of the Passover lamb. They were delivered from the judgment of God on their sin. As they trusted under the blood, the, the, while the destroyer was coming through, God was hovering over them and protected them and did not allow the destroyer to come upon them. And likewise, when you put your trust, when you have, you have an overcoming faith, because when you trust in the blood of the Lamb and you apply it to your life and you claim the blood of Jesus with your lips, say, praise God, then God hovers over you and judgment cannot come upon you. You're delivered from judgment and you are protected from all divine judgment and all curse. Praise God. You overcome and all condemnation through that faith. That was the faith of Moses in the Passover. And finally, the final great event pointed out by Hebrews, it says, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Faith overcomes impossible obstacles and delivers us completely from the power of sin and death and curse and Satan. You see, as the Israelites escaped, they, God directed them through the Wadi Watir, a mountain pass that went towards the sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. And Pharaoh followed them and they seemed to be trapped against the sea, against an impassable barrier, trapped between the mountains. And the Lord, it seemed like the Lord had designed it. And now Pharaoh catches them up and traps them against the sea. And it says, they were very afraid. The children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see no more again forever. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. This is the faith of Moses now. It seemed like the sea was an impossible barrier. Pharaoh, which represents sin and the curse, and Satan is bound to destroy them. But he had heard from God that God would deliver them from their enemies and destroy the enemies. What a picture of faith, you see. The people were moving into fear. So he says, first of all, fear not. God is with you. And the first step is to cease from your own works and receive salvation as a gift from God. You can't save yourself. So he said, stand still, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. What he's saying is, you've got to see it as done through the eyes of faith before you see it with your natural eyes. See yourself free. See the salvation of the Lord. It's not the salvation you can work for. It's the salvation of the Lord. But you've got to see it. You've got to believe it. You've got to see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. You've got to stand still and believe you receive it first. 
by faith. See it as done that the Egyptians, you'll see them no more. The Lord is, see the Lord fighting for you. See yourself in the victory. And only then were they given the next step, which was to act on their faith. The action must start, come from their faith, you see. And he says, why do you cry to me? The Lord said. Now, he wasn't rebuking. He was, this is a rhetorical question. He's saying, look, you've prayed. I've heard you. Now it's time for you to take action. Tell the children of Israel now to go forward towards the sea. Now they're to march in faith towards the sea. And he said to Moses, lift up the rod of authority, the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go over on dry land through the midst of the sea. They faced this impossible barrier. Their enslavers were on them to destroy them. And God had given them the promise of victory and they, were to, they received it by faith. And then they were to move forward. Moses lifted up his rod and as they acted in faith, God's power moved. When you find your impossible barrier in front of you, and the powers of darkness coming against, coming behind you. You lift up the name of Jesus and you command that sea to be divided and the wind of the spirit will then blow and make a, a way where there was no way and you can walk through and the enemy following behind you will be drowned under the sea, the curse totally defeated. This is what Jesus did for us when he went through the waters of death and he came out the other side and all the power of sin and Satan and the curse was destroyed and buried. And if we have faith in Jesus as Israelites had faith in Moses, we walk through to the other side. We've died and we've risen with Christ. When you trust in Christ, praise God, you have the victory over the impossible. Praise God, Jesus is your victor. So the faith of Moses teaches us that by faith we can overcome impossible obstacles and be delivered completely from all the power of the enemy, sin, curse, Satan, and even death. Amen.